make friends you will find that it's easier to make friends uh with people from india from your own community or your respective country and i think transit is good but it needs to be better position if you don't have a family doctor it takes longer you have to wait in queues you have to take appointments for everything because you are coming to a new country you will have to scratch and claw and make your way up Hi guys, I'm Mr. Rafael. I'm the Wandering Beardo. It's been 60 days since I've been in Canada, and I get asked a lot of questions. What is Canada like? You know, lots of different kinds of questions, and I thought I'm going to put a video together and talk to you about it. So the first question I think is is something everybody wants to know, right? Everybody wants to know: Is Canada cold? Well, it's Canada. It is the Great White North. I don't know what you were expecting, <laughs> right? Um, but here's the reality. Um, I landed here when it was still summer, and it was hot. When I say hot, I'm talking about 30 degrees. Some days going up to 33 degrees. Okay. Uh, it does get cold, and it's not yet gotten that cold. Um, right now, temperatures are around 15 to 16 degrees. Uh, on some days, it's 20 degrees, which is really nice and pleasant. If the sun is out, it can be a little warm. But right now, I can say Canada is not really that cold. Winters, I'll let you know when it happens. Is everything expensive in Canada? Yeah, it is. Um, I think the important thing to consider is the difference in the valuation of the currency. So obviously, things are going to be more expensive. But the truth is, despite that, uh, Canada is an expensive country to live in. So if you are planning to come and live in Canada. You need to make sure you've got a good amount of savings, because you will end up spending quite a bit in the first couple of months. Canada is full of Indians. Uh, I get asked that a lot, uh, and the answer, if I have to put it out there, is yes and no. It depends on where you are in Canada. So where I am right now in Brantford, there are a lot of Canadians, but yes, there are Indians that are coming here. um specifically for study because Brantford has two large universities here and a lot of international students are coming so it's not just indians there are people from different parts of the world including africa so i've got a lot of nigerians i've got about five nigerians in our, in my class itself uh you have uh, people from different parts of the world that are actually in canada in brantford there are places like um sari in british columbia or brampton um you know in ontario which has a very large population of indians um so no not every part of canada has indians um and yes there are indians there are quite a few indians because yes a lot of indians come to canada settle down and they form a very integral part of the community here do you get lonely well it is starting over right you are starting over in a new country you are going to have to make friends and making friends in a new country is never easy uh it does mean that it's going to take time it's going to take efforts but let me tell you this canadians are really friendly people they will hello you they will they will nod their head out of respect um they will start up a conversation you know at the grocery store and and i've had some really pleasant conversations It takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of effort to make friends. You will find that it's easier to make friends uh with people from India, from your own community or your respective country. But it's not uncommon to make friends with Canadians. Um I I'm still uh, working my way there, but yes, I've I've started to build uh good conversations, good relationships with the Canadians here. So yeah, it is not impossible. It does get lonely because you're going to miss family, you're going to miss the people back home. You've lived all your life back home and then you come here and you're starting afresh. So yes, you will miss them. And yes, there are moments when you will be alone. But then I think that's a person to person thing. Canada is really beautiful. Uh yes, Canada is extremely beautiful. I mean, I'm in love with Canada so far and I've just seen Brantford. I've not even seen the rest of Canada. but i've heard from a lot of people that have come here the canada is really beautiful and that's true um there's so much natural beauty there is so much to see so much to experience um cities like brantford especially are really really quiet and uh it can be disconcerting for some 
but I love it. I love the peace. I love the quiet. I love the experience that I'm having here. So yeah, Canada is beautiful. The parks are beautiful. I made a couple of videos on parks. If you go check out those videos on my channel, I'll put the link somewhere down in the description for you to have a look at them. Do you drink water out of the tap? Yes, we drink water out of the tap. Um, water in Canada, you can drink it out of the tap and it's absolutely safe to drink. There is no problem. I've been having it for two months now. I think I started off this the first month uh, going and buying, you know, this huge five liter bottle of water and thinking I'm going to have to have that. But uh, I started drinking tap water and I realized it's absolutely safe. There's no problem at all. Um, Canada does have a, a very, very good filtration system, so you will not get sick. Um, are mobile plans expensive? Yes, they are. You are not going to get cheap data plans in Canada, but your calls uh, in Canada are free as long as you're making a call from one person to another, which is a regular call, is free. Text messages are free. Uh, Canadians don't generally use WhatsApp that much. They prefer to text each other. Um, data is expensive. Data is extremely expensive and mobile plans can be expensive. So um, I've personally taken a really basic plan with just 3GB data and, uh, and that suffices me for the month because you get free Wi-Fi wherever you go. So Tim Hortons has Wi-Fi, McDonald's has Wi-Fi. Um, obviously the college will have Wi-Fi, the libraries will have Wi-Fi. You've got Wi-Fi mostly everywhere. So you don't really need it unless you're someone who's accustomed to watching videos on your phone or streaming live music on your phone and you want to do that when you're in the transit. Yeah, then that's up to you. But you you really don't need to use that much data. You really don't need a very big data plan. At least I don't think so. I, I think a basic plan suffices. Another question I get asked a lot is, uh, what's the party scene like? Um, again, it differs from city to city. It differs from province to province. Uh, where I am right now is a really small town. Brantford is a really small old town. There are very few bars, there are no pubs, there's no place to really party and let your, ha let your hair down. So um, there's no party scene here. But if you go from here to Hamilton, which is I think about 40 minutes or so away by car, yeah, they've got a party scene. I think when you go to the bigger cities, you have more of the party scene. Uh, they're more active. So yeah. What's your biggest expense? Uh, my biggest expense monthly is rent. Uh, and I think that's common across every Canadian household. Everyone who stays in Canada will tell you that their biggest expense is going to be rent. Housing rates are really, really, really high. Um, even if you're looking to rent an apartment, it is very expensive. Even in smaller cities like Brantford, especially cities like Brantford where you've got a student population coming in, it is expensive to rent an apartment. And uh, I see a lot of Indians choosing to um, live together, um, sharing apartments together. You know, I see a lot of Indians, um, um, you know, staying in twos and threes in a single room. Whereas, you know, I chose to take an apartment by myself. But believe me, it's really expensive. So it's, I think it's a person to person choice. But uh, my biggest expense is rent. From your videos, we can hardly see any people. And yes, that is true. So a lot of people have told me that they can't see people in my videos. Uh, I mean, there are people, but like I said, Brantford is a small town uh, and it's, it's a slower town than most big cities. It has a slow town feel, there's a certain charm to this place and you will see lesser people than you would in a regular city. But if you go down to Toronto, if you go down to Vancouver, if you go down to Montreal, you go to one of the biggest cities and there you will have crowds. Uh, thankfully, we don't have crowds here. It's very rare that the buses will be crowded. Uh, that does happen and you do stand sometimes in the buses, but it is very, very rare. So I get asked, what is crime like in Canada? Well, I'm not an expert and I can't really answer that question. Uh, it wouldn't be fair for me to really judge the country based on my experience of one city and definitely not in two months. But I'll tell you what I think so far. I've not seen anything serious happen here. Um, I've seen patrol vans uh, and I've seen a couple of times where people got pulled over. 
Um, I've seen a video online where maybe down the street I saw, uh, you know, there was a there was a police police blockade, but I haven't seen anything serious in Brantford. So what is transit like? What is the transportation like in Canada? That's the question I get asked also quite a lot by my friends. Um, transportation, I can't again talk about all of Canada, but I will talk about Brantford. In Brantford, transit is... Let me put this the, the best way I can. I think transit is good, but it needs to be better. Um, it needs to be better connected. You will end up doing a lot of walking when you are in Brantford because the bus will leave you at a distance from where you live and you will need to walk. If you're lucky, you might have a bus that drops you right where you need to go and right to right where you're from, right? But uh, like for me, I need to walk about 600 meters to get to a bus stop. Um, the bus takes me to the terminal and, and my luck is such that um, I've got my uh, college campus that's just next to the terminal so i don't have to walk there but i have to walk about 600 meters i know people walk a lot more so uh brantford transit is not as well connected the downside to brantford transit is uh, that buses come at intervals of 30 minutes on weekdays uh, even on saturday and on sundays it is running from uh, at intervals of one hour and it runs only till five in the evening so if you're going to travel post five in the evening on a Sunday, chances are you're going to have to walk. Um, Uber and uh, cabs are generally expensive and not probably a preferred way of traveling. Most people own cars. As Indians, we are used to a certain bathroom etiquette. We like our jet sprays. Uh, we like the bidet. Uh, in Canada, they don't wash, they wipe. Uh, though, there are solutions to this. So I personally carry wet wipes with me when I'm going outside the house. When I'm in the house, you do get uh, you do get bidet attachments that you can uh, attach to the faucet in your bathroom, uh, um, or you can well get a mug and a bucket. But yeah, you I don't think it is something that's you know unmanageable. Uh, if you're traveling to any place in Europe, in the U.S., uh, in Canada, it's I think normal that they use tissue papers. So yeah, that's true. What is healthcare like? Uh, I can just safely say I've not had the need to use healthcare just yet. And I'm hoping and I'm praying that I don't have to. Uh, but I have heard that healthcare, especially for students and for people on work permits, unless you're covered, uh, can be very expensive. Um, <clears throat> from what I hear, if you are somebody on PR, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, if I've got, I made, I made a mistake in, with the accuracy of this, please, uh, you know, comment down below. But uh, I, I believe that if you've got a PR or if you're a Canadian citizen, there is free, free healthcare. But, <clears throat> sorry about that. But um, it takes time. It takes time to get an appointment, uh, even with a general physician. If you don't have a family doctor, it takes longer. You have to wait in queues. You have to take appointments for everything. Uh, and unless it's an absolutely super serious thing, you are not going to get treatment. What's the downside of living in a, in a city like Brantford? Well, the downside of living in a city like Brantford, especially as an international student, is that Office jobs are hard to come by. Uh, they have very few administrative office jobs uh, in Brantford that are part-time. When you come to Canada on a student visa, you are actually um, allowed to by law work only 20 hours unless you have special permissions that allow you to do more work. Um, so there are opportunities it's not that jobs aren't there but the kind of jobs if you think you're going to get um you know a, a cushy uh, you know office job like the one that you had back home the moment you land in canada let me tell you right away that's not going to happen uh, you will have to because you are coming to a new country you will have to scratch and claw and make your way up and when you do, I think the results speak for themselves. There are a lot of people from India who are based in Canada today 
who are working good jobs, high profile jobs and are earning enough to support their families and more. And they're very, very happy. Uh, so that is one thing I think is the downside of living in a smaller city like Frankfurt, that the opportunities will be lesser. But as you move to one of the bigger cities, there are opportunities that will come up. And you just have to be patient. You just have to be willing to go with it, roll with the punches. So guys, that's our video for today. Um, that's my experience of Brantford uh, and Canada so far. So if you like this video, like, subscribe, share, hit that bell icon. You will get notifications of every new video that I put out. I am studying guys, so it will take me a while to keep posting videos, but I'll try my best. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I flew Emirates first class. And I'm going to make a video about that, telling you about my experience of first class. So stay tuned and I'll be back in the next video. Ciao.